Ezekiel chapter 44. And this is the title of this message finally at the end. Ezekiel 44, I'd like for you to look at verse 15 with me. I'm going to back up very quickly. I'm going to expound, but I'm not going to have us read. God's addressed the nation. The nation has backslidden away from God. God's trying to rebuild the temple and rebuild the church. To reestablish the priesthood. And to reestablish the things. Everybody look at pastor. The, to reestablish the things that God has as holy in his house his way. And there was a great falling away. There was a great sin of complacency and backsliding and whoredom in the nation and in the priesthood. And that's what brought destruction to the nation again. Now how many of you know that Israel is the apple of God's eye? Amen. That anybody that touches Israel touches God. Anybody that blesses Israel blesses God. And yet, he still allowed it to be wiped out numerous times because of the rebellion. Now he's reestablishing it. Wants to set it up his way again. And I want you to look at verse 15 very closely. But the priests, the Levites, the ones that in teaching and preaching in the temple, the sons of Zadok, that kept the charge and were faithful in my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me. So when everybody else was backsliding and bailed out on God and did their own thing, there was a handful of men of God that stayed in church, that stayed faithful to the high calling of God. And they were all the same ladies. They were the sons of Zadok. And because they were faithful when others weren't, and committed when others bailed. And stayed when others went off glory. God said, those and those alone you will use. Amen. There's a move all over the YouTube. For everybody with their little computers and their so-called ministries. Everybody's talking about get out of the church. Run from the church. Don't go to church. Have, you don't have to. You can have church in your living room. The ones that were faithful to the calling and the temple were the ones God used in restoration. Upon this rock I will build my what? Church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And false, phony prophets that are anti-church will fall before the church will fall. Amen. And those that have stayed faithful to the landmarks of the church that won't compromise that believe God's worthy enough to wear a suit and give excellence to. That believe God's more than show up any way you want, any time you want, any how you want. That say, God's holy, God's high, God's great. Yes, He's my Father, but I show my earthly Father great respect. <laughs> how much more God, instead of slopping around, slamming around, yeah, God, yay, God, bye, God, see you when I'm in the mood. Yeah. Preachers standing up in their t-shirts out over their blue jeans with holes in it and tennis shoes trying to be hip to a culture that's uninterested. Those that stayed faithful to the high calling, high calling of God in church, in the house of God, the ways of God, the standards of God, the principles of God, the precepts of a holy God. Yes, He's grace. Yes, He's love. But that's no excuse for sin and complacency. And our sin and our complacency and the hallelujah, what's it to you, has cost us our very nation. Amen. 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 Now look at what these sons of Zadok should be able to do. And we'll close with this. For they were kept charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel 
went astray from me. They shall come near to me to minister unto me. They shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord. They shall enter into my sanctuary. They shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they and they shall keep my charge. Now skip over to verse 23. And they, the sons of Zadok, that special lineage of priests that proved faithfulness to the way God always was. They shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane. That doesn't exist anymore. You know how many people I run into? Well, I, it's all about grace. I know it's flesh. I can fornicate. It's grace. I don't remember a single apostle fornicating. And if it was sin in the apostolic days, it's sin now. If it was sin in John Wesley's day, it's sin now. If it's sin in Bible's days, it's sin now. The plumb line doesn't move. And when he said keep the Sabbath holy then, he meant it now. When he said that no infeminate shall enter the kingdom of heaven 2,000 years ago in his holy word, that was written in Revelations after the rapture. No infeminate is going to heaven. So they can say, well, I married homosexuals and we have a homosexual because it's the greatest expression of love to the sinner. No, you've moved the landmarks. You've messed with the boundaries. You've decayed the foundation. And there's no hope for them to become righteous when you play with God's plumb line. Mm -hmm. No homosexuals entering the kingdom of God. Amen. Whether you like it or not, whether you love a homosexual or not, I work with some of them that hug my neck. And they know I love them. But I don't change the plumb line just because they're standing in front of me. <coughs> and no fearing coward will enter that kingdom of heaven. Man, Be strong and courageous. Behave yourself like a man of God. Don't compromise. Don't touch the landmarks. Don't move the boundaries and the guidelines of God. And be a man about it. Amen. And when God commanded Sarah to respect Abraham like her king and called him what? Lord? God still expects that out of women now. Whether the Jezebel spirit likes that says prophesy not to us and we don't want to hear it or not. You don't mess with the boundaries. Women of God, dress holy. Dress sanctified. Reverence your husband. Treat him like a lord. Oh, you can't preach that way. Stop messing with the landmarks. Amen. Everything about this Bible goes contrary to how we've raised the church. Because the church is full of a bunch of people no longer faithful to what God called the church to be. Oh, Jesus, Amen. Amen. And men, you sacrifice your life for your wife. You lay down your life what you want. Why do you want to Forget the boat. Take care of your family. Mm -hmm. Why well, like the fish? Throw it all in the water. Take your family to church, you lazy outfit. You carnal nonsense that should be leading your children to the kingdom of God. You gutless cowards that won't stand up and lead your family to righteousness. Mm -hmm. That won't love your wife like your own flesh. That think you just married your mama with benefits, she cleans your house, makes your bed, does your laundry, and sleeps with you while you're when you got time and you're not fishing and playing? Mm -hmm. You love your wife like Christ loved the church and died for it. Mm -hmm. None of that exists in church anymore. Mm -hmm. And nobody will preach it. Because you might offend this Jezebel nation. And the foundations have been decayed and there's no hope for the righteous until you get back to it. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 All 
our marital problems are because I won't be the man that God's called me to be and they won't be the woman God's called them to be. You treat your husband like a Lord, you got no problem with your husband. The husband died for his wife and loved her more than his own flesh and sell out everything and keep her happy and taken care of, you're going to have no problem with your wife. And you shut up and go to church and say, I'm serving God and when you, you, want, you want to do us right, you'll come to church with me and still walk in peace and love, you're not going to have any problems at home. You're going to have a sanctified, saved house. It's because we move the standards, all hell's taking over. Don't you think for a minute, men and women of God behind the pulpit aren't supposed to be able to tell you that's unholy. <coughs> that's filth. This is holy. Amen. Get rid of that. That's of God. And they should have the God-given gumption to open their mouths. You've heard me say, you're not going to come dancing in here half-dressed with stuff flopping out and act like you're all that in a bag of chips. Go home and put some clothes on. When you stand behind this pulpit, you're going to at least have a shirt and tie on. We're not doing blue, blue jeans and t-shirts behind the pulpit. Not when you minister. If I said, Obama's coming to church tomorrow, all of you be in, in suits. Ain't nobody showing up in flip-flops and blue jeans for Obama, but we'll come to God like that. But, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. What is that legalism? No, it's respect. Mm -hmm. I don't go to court. When I was a cop, I wouldn't go to court in a t-shirt and blue jeans. The department I worked for wouldn't allow it. They had standards. It's required for an officer to show up in court in a suit and tie or a sport coat and tie. Isn't it? Isn't it still? Mm -hmm. Natural court of man. And we come into the holy house of God, Lucy and Goosey on each arm. <coughs> Amen? We got quiet in this Pentecostal church. <laughs> Let's close with this watch. They shall teach between the holy and the profane. They shall cause them, teach the church how to discern, how to see, how to know the difference between unclean and clean. You know what that means? They have some standards. That's just not God. We're not doing it. If Jesus walked in in the flesh, I would be embarrassed to be like this right now. Whatever it's doing or however I am. You know what that means? Unholy and unclean. Mm -hmm. If you've got to hide it before you answer the door for Jesus, it's unholy. If you got to change before you answer the door with Jesus, it's unholy. And if you think for a minute he walked in your house and you wouldn't fall on your face in holy reverence and fear, you are sadly, sadly deceived. Because every time he showed up to an apostle, what did they do? They fell on their face as if they were dead. And that's after they walked with them hand in hand for three years in ministry. Amen. Have you had anything for you? Just hang on to that when he visits. It's not bondage. I respect courts, I get dressed. I respect Obama, I get dressed. I respect God, I get dressed. I'm not wearing no halter tops and my belly button hanging out and all this other nonsense in church. And it happens. Or I wouldn't even be bringing it up. And none of it in here, but I'm telling you, it's chronic all over the body of Christ. <coughs> no guidelines, no standards, no landmarks, no foundations. Don't stand for anything. Because after all, we might love them. It's not even the love it's talking about. Amen? Amen. Amen. And in controversy, verse 24, they shall stand in judgment. I mean, that's, that's the dad's me. Okay. They shall stand in judgment. They shall judge it according to my judgment. So how I run the church, how I make decisions in controversy, how I decide what to do, what not to do, what's right, what's not right, my judgments are based on what? His judgments. Thank you, Timothy.
Well, Minister, why, why did you marry that homosexual couple? Well, I just thought it's what love would be. Your judgments should be based on God's judgment. What you thought is completely irrelevant, except for the way to get you into sin. Amen. Amen. And his judgments, he shall judge it according to my judgments, and they shall keep my laws and my statutes in all my assemblies, in all my churches, in every service, and they shall hollow, hallow my Sabbath. Going to church should be a holy, awesome, reverential thing, not a social club. And every bit of this, my dear precious family, every bit of this world has decayed. And that's why evil's at the door. That's why destruction's coming on the world. And that's why there's no hope except for us to believe this once again. Come back to this. Repent of our wicked ways. Cry out to God for mercy on America and do it now because we're out of time. I was pastor in a church. I was assistant pastor of a church in Redlands, California. And I got up in the pulpit, beautiful church, two-story church, big wraparound balcony built back in the 1800s. It was a historical landmark. Beautiful, gorgeous church. Got in this beautiful platform behind this ornate antique pulpit that we had. All of it was original, built back in the 1800s together. And as soon as I opened my Bibles and I said, if you'd open your Bibles, and I opened my Bible, and then I went into the Spirit. Bam. Had an open vision. And it was the same church, but I was in the Spirit having a vision. I mean, instantaneously. And there were several hundred people like there were when I walked up into the pulpit. It was the exact same church, same congregation. But instead of seeing them before me like I see you, I, I was in the Spirit. And we had 300 hand-carved original wooden pews in that church. And the people all of a sudden were lifeless, with no motion, like that. Anybody ever see any of these wax figures before they tint them? It's just the, the plain wax, how it looks yes. opaque, and you can almost see through it. And it looks exactly like the, the image of the person, but there's no color. There's no li appearance of life in it. That's exactly how they all look. They look like wax figures just sitting there staring at them. Without motion, without color, without any sign of life in them. They're all there, several hundred of them, like zombies. Alive, and I knew they were alive, but they were lifeless. No animation to them, no... No color of vitality. Nothing. Just like that. And I'm behind the pulpit. And as I'm looking, trying to figure out what's wrong with these people. And I'm looking at them just like I'm looking at you now. But what's wrong with these people? And I said, God, what's going on? Over here in the corner of my eye, because it had two sections like this, and then on the side it had going <coughs> sideways, three or five, about five rows of pews, and on that side about five rows of pews, and then above the same amount in the balcony. And I'm, and I'm looking around. What's wrong with these people? Lord, what's going on? And all of a sudden, here, over here, I saw, what was that? I saw something move between the pews. And I'm over here looking, and I see it over here. What was that? And I'm seeing something move in and out of the pews, and I can't quite catch it yet. And then all of a sudden, I look over, and I see it behind one row in front of the other. What is that? And I saw it again over here. You ever see the pictures of the Loch Ness Monster? The humps coming out of the water? That's exactly what was going on. They go over there and they move. It's moving in and out throughout the pews. And I said, Lord, what is going on? And then all of a sudden, a hump manifested with scales just about where Robert and his daughter are at, Ashley. And I got a good look at it. I said, it looks like some kind of a serpent. And as soon as I thought of it, a giant snake's head. It was, a, it was a snake going in and out of the pews. Hmm. Seducing them and sucking the life out of them. And all sitting in church but without any form of godliness in life. Hmm. 
Satan will come to the pew with you. Yes. And as soon as I got a good look at him, whew, he manifested like 16 feet above me. And his head was twice as big as the pulpit, and he arced back to strike me. And the second, and he was coming to kill me. He had already controlled them. <coughs> Let them go back and forth to church and sit like zombies, but with no life of God in them. And he's going in and out of the pews. And he's coming to kill me. And the second he rose up to strike, I said, I had my Bible. I said, Jesus! And the second I said, Jesus, just in a split second, my Bible turned into a flaming sword, and beyond my power came out and struck him on the crown of the head and exploded him all over the place. And as soon as he exploded into oblivion, back out of the walls of the church, the People started blinking, colors started coming back into their skin, and they started looking around like, where have I been? <laughs> the only thing that can destroy the seductive, life-stealing influence of Satan in the church is the sword of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Not psychology, not programs, not entertainment, but get back to the old-fashioned preaching of the sword of the living God. That's Saith the Lord is the only thing that strikes and destroys Satan. Amen. Amen. And the church has been sedated into a zombie existence without Christ through social engineering of men of God that don't want to offend, and don't want to upset, and don't want to be driven out of the city. Come back to the fiery sword of the living God. Come back to the only thing that will destroy the adversary in America. Come back to the only thing that can save your nation. And come back to it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, give the Lord a big hand for it.